not Netawan Alan Salazar, Sekva Nukasin, Chukoyanga Nukasin. Hello, I'm Alan Salazar, Uchuk Yayak, which is fast runner in my, my tribal language. Uh, I'm from the village of uh, Sekva, which is now called San Fernando, California. And uh, I trace back my Tatavayam ancestry to the village of Chigoyanga, which is in Santa Clarita. Magic Mountain was actually built over that uh, village. Uh, I, I want to start by uh, showing uh, my, my ancestry and, and uh, uh, who I am. Uh, so I uh, am um, a member of the Fernandino Tatavayam Band of Mission Indians, who are a very small tribe uh, from northern Los Angeles County. Uh, so parts of the San Fernando Valley, uh, Santa Clarita Valley, going up into the mountains towards Gorman and uh, towards Palmdale and Lancaster. Uh, I get my tribal ancestry, my indigenous ancestry from my father's side of, the, of, of my family. So this is my uh, father right here. He, when he was a young man, he was in the Marines uh, uh, in World War II in uh, Saipan and Okinawa. This is my father later on in life. Um, and uh, I have some family pictures here to share with you. Uh, my, my grandmother and grandfather. Uh, so that's my grandmother and grandfather right there. Uh, they were both born in the late 1890s. Uh, my grandmother, uh, Vera Ortega Salazar, was born in 1898. Uh, this is my grandmother right here at her christening. Uh, like many California tribal people, my, my uh, grandparents were uh, good Catholics, and that's because my uh, tribal ancestors were brought to the San Fernando Mission starting in 1799. This gentleman right here is uh, my great-grandfather, Antonio Maria Ortega. And I say all the time that I would not be here if it wasn't for my great-grandfather, great Antonio, um, because he is a very determined, strong-willed, uh, hard-working, uh, highly skilled worker. Uh, so my great-grandfather, Antonio Maria Ortega, was uh, born in 1849 when California became a state. And for those of you that aren't aware, which are, there are many people, uh, when California became a state, uh, the official state policy was to exterminate all California Indians. They had a bounty system where if the early uh, American settlers uh, killed a California Indian and they scalped them, and brought in the scalp, they were given a bounty. They killed them and chopped off their head. They were given a larger bounty. So my great-grandfather my, and, and uh, my great-grandmother and his parents, uh, my great-great-grandparents, survived one of the worst genocides in American history. And the family believes it's, it's because uh, both my great-great-grandparents and my great-great-grandparents were all very hard workers and highly skilled workers. So they were just worth more alive than they were, were dead. Uh, but the Tataviam tribe is a very small tribe because we were almost uh, exterminated and almost became extinct. We were down to less than 100 uh, by uh, the late 1880s, uh, probably about 40 or 50. Uh, so that's where I get my tribal ancestry. We also have uh, Shumash. So the San Fernando mission was unique in that they brought in from the south of the San Fernando mission in, in the San Fernando Valley and going towards Los Angeles, they brought in uh, Gabrielito Tongva. Uh, and then from the west of the mission, they brought in Shumash. So we traced back to the village of Tapu, uh, which is in Simi Valley. Um, and then to the north, my Tataviam uh, ancestors. Uh, my mom is uh, uh, Portuguese and English and various uh, European ancestries. Uh, so uh, I just did a talk uh, with a storytelling project with USA Today. And it was about my, my indigenous roots and, and that being also uh, of European ancestry uh, of that typical American and on my mom's side, my, my, uh, my mom's family uh, immigrated from uh, Portugal, uh, actually the Azores, which are islands off of Portugal uh, and from England on uh, my mom's uh, father's side, my grandfather on my mom's side. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, but I've always identified as, as indigenous uh, and uh, I'm a proud member of, like I said, the Fernandino Tataviam Band of uh, Mission Indians. 
and I'm on their elders council. For the last 25 uh, years, I've, I've focused a lot on traditional uh, Chumash uh, and Native American storytelling. Uh, and even prior to that, I, I was, I've always been a storyteller. I always enjoyed when, when my pop would tell, tell a story in, 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 in the book I'm gonna share with you in a moment. I, I, I tell a, a little story and, and this happened uh, probably hundreds of, of times. My, my pop would say, did I ever tell you the story about Joe Barron and I going deer hunting? And I would go, yes, pop, you told me at least a dozen times that story. He goes, well, it, it was a warm spring summer day and, and, and we were in the mountains uh, uh, east of uh, Bakersfield. And, and, and he goes on to tell me the story again. And uh, I enjoyed it the 13th time as, as much as I did the 12th time. Uh, so uh, storytelling has, has always been a, a part of my life. In the early 70s, when I was a young man, uh, I taught preschool. I was one of the few male preschool teachers in California, probably at that time. Uh, and one of the things that I enjoyed and got, and got involved in, in teaching young people was that story time, sharing, sharing stories. Uh, and, and I've been recently approached uh, uh, by some, some people that are much more talented than, than I am. And we hope to make a, an animated version of, of uh, our book, Tata the Tatavi Um And to show me what they were talking about, they sent me an animated uh, version of Where the Wild Things Are, uh, which is a wonderful children's book. Uh, and it was one of my favorites. I've read it to my to my uh, daughter and, and son. And and when I taught preschool at, at story time, uh, where the wild things are was was one of my favorite uh, children's story. Uh, when I uh, bef before I, I get to my book, uh, in, in the, the book is more than just a story of of a, of a toy bird, which I I'm completely fascinated with. Um, uh, it, it also has some tribal history uh, and uh, explanations of how how uh, Mona Lewis, the illustrator, uh, made the paints and, and uh, for the illustrations and things like that. But at the core of the book is, as I mentioned earlier, my Fernandinho Tataviam tribe was was that close to being extinct um, during the mission period. Uh, half of California tribal people uh, died during that 40, 50 year period of the mission period. And then after that, as I stated about my great grandfather, Antonio Maria Ortega, uh, one of the worst genocides uh, in US history uh, happened here in California. And the California tribal population, uh, California tribal population throughout all of California uh, was almost extinct. By the end of uh, the uh, 1880s, our population was less than probably 5%. Uh, so uh, most of uh, my Tataviam language is lost. Uh, we are working with a linguist and trying to bring back as much as we can. And, and then we'll use a similar dialect, some of the Serrano tribe to our east, uh, to the east of my Tataviam territory spoke a, a similar language. So we're using a, a lot of their language and some of the Tongva Gavrilino, which is also a very similar dialect. Uh, but uh, there's very few Tataviam traditional myth and, and legend recorded out there. So what uh, I've decided to do is uh, I, I researched my tribal history, my tribal culture, how did they live? Who did they trade with? What were their religious beliefs? Uh, were they clan people? Did they use animals as teachers? Uh, and I, I've started writing stories as close as I can to way, the way I believe my ancestors would have told stories. You know, how, how would have my, my fifth or sixth great grandparents on the Tataviam side told stories about, about the animals. Uh, so uh, Tata the Tataviam Toei uh, is an original story. 
And we're currently working on our next book, which will be a creation story. Uh, the Tataviam uh, people, uh, like, like many of the tribes in Southern California, the Tonka Gabalino, the Shumash, the Serrano, uh, we are clan people. We have animals as, as uh, symbols, animals as teachers. Uh, so we have the deer clan, the bear clan, uh, the lizard clan, the spider clan. Um, and we use animals as, as teachers. So uh, one thing I've been involved with for over 25 years uh, is uh, what is called a, a, a Native American monitor or, or cultural resource uh, 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 consultant, uh, which basically is simply put, we and I try and protect ancient village sites and ancient uh, burial sites. So whenever they're building or doing any kind of excavation, maybe they're putting in a, a, a sewer line somewhere for, for a large development or telephone and, and cable lines. Uh, and if they're doing any excavation, any digging near ancient village sites, I, I go there to monitor. And uh, about um, 10 years ago, uh, I, I was working on a site in Simi Valley near, near my uh, village of Tapu. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's a very large site uh, and it's highly contaminated. So they were taking soil samples all over this 2,800 2, acre site. Uh, but uh, it, it's pretty pristine. There's very few buildings and, and there's no hunting allowed. So the wildlife, uh, the, the deer, the coyotes, mountain lions, and all the small creatures are, are in abundance. And I became fascinated with this small little bird, this little toey bird. Uh, uh, they're a little bit bigger than a sparrow and a little bit smaller than a robin. Uh, they're, they're pretty uh, uh, bland in, in their color. They're just kind of grayish, brownish a little bit uh, with a little bit of orangish uh, uh, in, uh, on their backside uh, underneath their tail feathers. Uh, which they like to flick up and, and, and show you those little orangish, brownish orange uh, uh, feathers. Um, and for some reason, uh, if, uh, and I believe it's a survival technique, uh, they hop and run more than they fly and they stay in the brush. So you very rarely see a towhee uh, out in, in, in the open in the middle of, of the field or underneath the brush. And that's where all the seeds and, and, and bugs are. Uh, and uh, as the last resort, they will fly. So if you get too close to them or something, uh, uh, predator is, is getting close to them, they, they, they will fly. But I have never seen a towhee flying much higher than uh, 20, 30 feet off, off the ground. You know, and they'll fly maybe into the branches of, of a tree. And they're just a fascinating uh, little bird. Uh, and what, one thing I hope my book and my stories do is uh, it inspires people, uh, especially young people, uh, take your shoes off, walk on Mother Earth, and go sit underneath a tree. An oak tree is a great place because oak trees uh, provide uh, shelter and food for more animals than any other tree. Uh, and just watch. The, the animals, watch the hawks as they, as they fly by, watch, watch the little bugs and, and, and insects as they crawl, crawl around and the lizards and, and small birds, the sparrows and, and, and the flycatchers and, and the robins and blue jays and, and woodpeckers, uh, just sit and watch them because tribal people, that's what we've done. And we try and learn from them. How do they survive? What's their strengths? What's their weaknesses? Because we all have our strengths, we all have our weaknesses. So that's my tribal history and kind of an intro in, into the uh, uh, Tata, the Tatavi on Toy. Today I'm gonna to share with you uh, uh, my first book, uh, Tata, the Tatavi on Toy. Uh, I'm very proud of it. Uh, uh, it's an original story that I wrote, Alan Salazar, Puchu Yayak, which is Fast Runner, my tribal name. 
illustrations are by Mona Lewis, uh, who who's, is here with me today. And Mona did all the illustrations that I'll talk about in, in a moment, and they're just beautiful. So uh, I'm going to share with you uh, Tata the Jatavion Toei. Um, the book is dedicated to my pop uh, and, and my tribal ancestors, and I hope to inspire the, the next generation of storytellers. Uh, this is a story of a young Tataviam Toei. Uh, today we call them California Toeys, but Tata uh, was hatched long ago near the village of Painga, which is near modern day Castake Lake. Uh, the Toeys are, are small birds that hop and run from chaparral bush to chaparral bush. Uh, they occasionally fly, but never very high or very far. So here's a map of, of Tataviam territory. It is where Tata, uh, this California Toei, was born. Once there was a young Tataviam Toei bird. His name was Tata. When Tata was young, his parents taught him how to hop and run from chaparral brush to chaparral brush and where to find the best seeds and the juiciest bugs. Tata's parents also taught him how to fly. They told him over and over, Tata, never fly too high. Never fly above the trees. Why, asked Tata. Tata's pop said, there are killer giant birds, hawks, eagles, and falcons. And they have sharp, sharp talons. And they're fast and strong, and they will eat you. Now, Tata was already five weeks old. And like most teenagers, he thought his parents were just trying to scare him. His parents seemed to be telling the truth. But like most teenagers, he wanted to see these giant killer birds with his own eyes. So one day he landed at the top of a coyote brush. He looked to the left, he looked to the right. He didn't see any killer hawks, falcons, or eagles. He saw nothing. So then Tata flew to the top of the elderberry tree, about 25 feet high. When we got up to the top of the elderberry tree, he looked to the left, he looked to the right, and he didn't see any killer hawks, falcons, or eagles. He saw nothing. So then he flew to the top of the grandfather oak tree, the largest tree where Tata lived, over 70 feet high. And he flew all the ways to the top. And he looked to his left, and he looked to his right, and he saw nothing, no killer hawks, falcons, or eagles. Well, just about then, Tata's friend, Juan the Sparrow, flew up in the tree next to him. Juan asked, what are you doing way up here, my friend? And Tata explained to him about the giant killer birds his parents had warned him about, and that he wanted to see them for himself. Tata said, I looked all around, but I don't see any killer birds. Just at that moment, Juan said, up, my friend. And Tata did, and he looked up, and circling high above him was a giant red tailed hawk with sharp, sharp talons. Just then, the hawk tucked his wings and dove down towards the two small birds. They hopped into the center of the tree for protection. And they were very scared, but the red-tailed hawk was not after the two small birds. He was diving for a rattlesnake. And he grabbed the rattlesnake with his powerful talons and flew off with that rattlesnake. Tata was scared and he said to his friend, that giant killer hawk just caught a, 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 a rattlesnake, a rattlesnake. Holy moly, my parents were telling me the truth. Juan said, my parents told me the same thing. Maybe we should listen to them more closely. The two friends looked at each other and 
then they started to laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. But after seeing that giant killer red tail hawk, the young birds did listen to their parents more closely. They just continued to act like they weren't listening to them and that they didn't believe them. And yes, even the Taviam Toys can roll their eyes. Teenagers are teenagers. Doesn't matter if you're a teenage Toei, a teenage Tataviam, or a teenager anywhere around the world. Now, one of the, there's, there's many things about this book that we're extremely proud of. So uh, if, if you can see here, uh, as I said, uh, the Tataviam were a very small tribe. And, and even within the indigenous communities within Southern California, there's very little known about the Jatavian people. So one of the things that, that Mona and I thought would be important to include in the book would be the his, a, a little brief history uh, so that if, if you're a third grader or fourth grader or, or elementary school uh, student or an elementary school teacher, you ha we, we, we have about four or five uh, pages of uh, information about uh, the uh, uh, the Jatavian people, uh, facts, uh, interesting facts like most of our villages were on south facing slopes. So our tribe, to, neighboring tribe to the north is the Kitanuma. They live up by Tahone and in the mountains going into the San Joaquin Valley towards Bakersfield. And they call this Tataviam. That's where we, the name Tataviam came from. It's what the, the, our neighboring tribe to the north called us and it means people facing the sun. And many of our villages were built on south facing slopes in the foothills so that we got that early morning sun even during the, the winter. Uh, our villages were, were small villages. Like I said, we we're a very small tribe uh, before European contact. There were probably still only maybe about four, three, 4,000 uh, of us, uh, which is a small tribe. And to give you an example, there were probably about Three to 4,000 Tataviam people. Our villages were around 50 to 100 people, so small villages. Our neighbors to the west, the Shumash, which my family also has Shumash ancestry, They're, they were one of the largest tribes in California in a pre European contact in the 15 and 1600s. They estimate that there was probably 30,000 Shumash people, so they, they were 10 times larger than, than the Taviam. Uh, we can find the, the history talks about our, our houses. If you can see, they're, they're much like Shumash houses. The Shumash word is op, the uh, Tataviam word is uh, peach, and they're dome shaped houses uh, framed with willow. And so there's information about the Tataviam, uh, how we lived, and uh, games that we played uh, that are the early uh, uh, history uh, of. Uh, when we were brought to the San Fernando Mission starting in 1797, when the San Fernando Mission was started, uh, and then that early California history I, that I talk a little bit about. Uh, so uh, there, there's a lot of information. Uh, I mentioned games. So one of the things that we have in our book uh, is the walnut dice game. And it explains how, how, uh, how uh, some of us play the walnut dice game and uh, games of chance uh, like uh, Beyond, uh, which uh, uh, is a game where you, you hide uh, uh, either a real small stick or real small bones, and one will be uh, black and one will be white, and, and you, you know, move, move the, 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 the sticks from hand to hand, and then uh, the other player has to choose which, which hand has the black stick. And if he picks this hand and it has the white stick, when they, they lose and they have to give them a stick. The dice game, you roll the, the, the walnut dice. And um, uh, once again, we use uh, colored sticks. So each player might have six or 10 sticks. And if I throw the dice and all six of them land the same way, say with the, with the flat part of the dice. So you take a round dice and cut it in half. You have a, a flat half and then a rounded half. If all six of the dice land with a flat half uh, side up, or the rounded side up all six, that's two points. And every one of, the, of your fellow uh, opponents have to give you two of their sticks. And, and then uh, if you roll the dice and you don't get any, any good combination, like if you get four and two and five and one, that's nothing. 
and the other person gets a, a chance to, to get to, to win some sticks and you just keep rolling the dice and playing uh, and you sing songs and you and you laugh and you joke and and, and, and share stories a little bit as, as you're playing the dice game and it could go on all night um, uh, so our, our, our games were, were an important part so we, we we put the dice game in there uh, but as I said uh, the illustrations in the book all those pictures I was showing you this this picture right here on the cover uh, were done by Mona Lewis uh, uh, the, the beautiful woman that, that I introduced uh, and she's a very talented artist uh, and what we did was uh, she made all of the paints from natural ochres. For those of you that don't know what ochres are, those are soft stones uh, that uh, you can pound up into a powder. Uh, and lots of times you have to soak them in water and, and kind of get the, uh, the, the sand to settle. And then you get that fine powder uh, and, and you let it dry. Uh, and then you either mix a pine pitch, the sap from a pine tree, uh, the egg whites from a from an egg. Um, uh, and today you go online and, and you can buy various binders to mix with your with your powder paints. But we went out and, and, and we would go for hikes and when we'd be driving, if we if we'd see some soft stones, some ochres, we would stop uh, and collect them. So uh, almost all of, of, of the paints are from ochres uh, that we collected in Tavium territory. The Santa Clara River runs through Tataviam territory to the Santa Clarita Valley. And the Santa Clarita Valley is kind of the center of Chumash territory. And so there's several creeks and streams that run into the Santa Clara River that, that kind of feed it um, and bring water to it. And, and uh, we would go for hikes and, and walk in these little creek beds and, 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 and the river when it's dry and, and, and we would find little small uh, brownish and yellowish and and grayish uh, uh, stones that Mona would, uh, you know, meticulously pound up and make into a powder, and, and, and then add a, a binder, a, either a sap of some kind. Um, and uh, we would take uh, lots of times elderberry, which is a nice soft wood, uh, willow, uh, even sometimes the, the, the branches uh, from uh, sage, uh, white sage, and. Uh, she uh, puts them in a tin, and in the book, uh, she shows how, how to make the, uh, the pigments and, and, and how to make uh, black pigments from uh, charcoal. Uh, so um, uh, we, we, we made our own charcoal in our fireplace here at our, at our condo. Uh, so all the things, uh, all, all the paints are, are the way uh, tribal people all around the world uh, have made paints for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, when I did my talk about my, my indigenous ancestry, uh, I talked about and finished the story uh, sharing that uh, I have English a little bit, not much. And when you look at me, I'm not going to convince too many people I'm English, <laughs> but I do have a little bit of English. Uh, and I tell people I, I, I've uh, always been a tea drinker my whole life. I don't like the smell of coffee. I don't like the taste of coffee. I've never drank it. I've always drank tea. And uh, uh, Earl Grey is my tea of choice. Uh, and when I went on my first big trip in my life, which was about six years ago, I went to Bath, England. And I was there for two weeks and I did storytelling, much like what I just shared with you. Uh, and, and, and talks about the Tataviam and Shumash tribes at a museum in Bath, England. I fell in love with Bath, England and the Bath people. And my, my English roots, I think, felt like they were at, at, at home. Uh, when I came back just a couple months ago, I started researching my English ancestry. And lo and behold, as I'm tracing back my English ancestry that I get on my, my grandfather, or my mom's dad, my mom's dad, who I knew almost nothing about. My mom and her father uh, did not get along. So I saw my grandfather, my mom's dad, one weekend, one time when I was about 11 years old, we went to visit. So I knew very little about my, my English ancestry, my grandfather. 
and then tracing back the, 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 the Kendall side of my ancestry. And then when it traced back to the East Coast, uh, they, they were Randalls. They, the Randall family had married into the family. We traced the Randall family back to England. And lo and behold, uh, my 10th great grandfather on my mother's side, my 10th great grandfather in the 1600s was the mayor of Bath, England. And it made me realize what a small world it is. So then I started researching the, the English people. And I've said this for years, we are all tribal people. So those of you that listen to this, to this story in my little talk, uh, if, if, if you're uh, Tonka, uh, Serrano, uh, Shumash, uh, uh, Yokits, Homo, uh, you know, Apache, Navajo, uh, Dene, uh, uh, Hopi. We know we're tribal people, but so are the English, so are the Irish, so are the Italians, Asian people, African people, we're all tribal people. We all come from tribal cultures. And I trace back when were the English living more of a tribal, uh, hunting and gathering and, and doing rock art, and painting in, in, in caves. And it, it was 3,000 years ago. So my tribal ancestors, my Tatavian ancestors, were living a, a tribal uh, life uh, 300 years ago. My English ancestors were, were living a tribal life three, 4,000 years ago. And what's fascinating to show you how we're all connected. Uh, my Shumash ancestry, there's Shumash villages on our islands off our coast, Anna Kappa, Santa Cruz, Santa Rosa. San Miguel. But 8,000 years ago, those four islands were one large island. A scientist named it Santa Rosé, and it was one large island. And our coastline was about three to five miles farther out. Uh, and then 8,000 years ago, on the west coast here, uh, the ocean waters started to warm and the ocean waters raised up and our coastline moved back to where it was and it took several hundred years, almost a thousand years. And the coastline moved back to where it is today. And that one large island became four islands. And they're all about five, six, seven miles apart. So those five, six miles between those islands used to be valleys on that one large island. England, the island of, of England, where there's uh, Scotland and Ireland, um, was attached to Europe. And around 10,000 years ago, when the waters warmed uh, in, in Europe and uh, Asia, uh, the ocean waters raised, creating the British Isles. So that, that connection uh, is something that's, that's just completely uh, fascinating to me. Um, let me get back to the book. Uh, another one of the uh, parts of the book is Mona uh, shows and describes how to draw a toy. So you can draw your, your, your own toy step by step. Uh, and you can either use natural pigments if, if you want. And then at the end of the book, uh, we have some, some uh, pages uh, to color. Uh, so uh, it, it's, Tata the Tatavi on Toei, but it, it's it's much more than than, than just a, a tribal story, and it's something that we're extremely proud of. Uh, and, and if I may uh, uh, plug our book, and, and uh, hopefully when, when this shows, maybe uh, someone can type it in. But it's Sun Sprite Hand Work dot com, and that's our website where you can order the book. And uh, I, I hope that I'm invited back so that uh, uh, we, we hope by the end of this summer that we've finished uh, our, our creation story, the Natavion creation story. And I'll give you a little tease on our creation story. Uh, I, I base my Natavion cre creation story on the fact that we are a clan tribe 
we have the bear clan, we have the eagle clan, we have the deer clan, uh, the coyote clan. Uh, and we use animals as teachers. So I believe that the Jatavion people were created by the animals. The animals were here first. Thousands and thousands of years ago, uh, there was no people in California or even in Southern California. 20,000 years ago, we were under ice. And when that ice started to melt and it got warm enough, the first colonizers of Southern California were the animals, the bugs, the insects, the birds, the mammals, the fish. And they colonized and lived here. And they did very little damage. And they all needed each other to survive. The little birds need those bugs to eat and survive. And then the second colonization of Southern California were the tribal people. The Chumash, the Chitabayam, the Tonka Gabalino, the Serrano, Kirinuma, the Yokas, the Balaba. There's dozens and dozens of tribes throughout uh, Zenyo, uh, uh, Kumeyaay. There's, there's dozens of tribes uh, in, in Southern California. And, and we were the second colonizers. And we, 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 we changed the, the, lay, the lay of the land a little bit. But for the most part, we lived in harmony with the land. And the third colonizers were the Spanish and Mexican. And they uh, left a little bit bigger footprint, sort of damming up the rivers and diverting the water to, to grow their crops. The tribes that I mentioned, we farmed the natural resources, so there's no reason for us to dam the rivers. We let them, the rivers flow the way they naturally did. We let all the creeks flow to the rivers. We left the lakes the way they were. Um, and then the fourth colonizer were the Americans. And uh, they, they changed uh, the land dramatically. Uh, uh, the Spanish, the Mexican, and the Americans all introduced uh, a lot of invasive plants, uh, uh, cattle and livestock, uh, which affected uh, uh, the, the other animals, the, the deer, uh, all the animals, the bears, the, the mountain lions, the coyotes, the wolves. Uh, and they dramatically changed. They killed all of the grizzly bears. There used to be hundreds of thousands of grizzly bears in California. They killed all the wolves. There used to be hundreds of thousands of wolves. Uh, so they, their, their impact was much, was much more dramatic. Uh, and my hope is uh, that you uh, enjoyed the story that inspires you to, to, uh, to become a storyteller, to write your stories, Start with your family story. Then I inspire you to go out into nature and sit and watch and, and learn from the animals. Which, which animals do you admire? Which ones fascinate you? For me, it was the toy. The toy just fascinated me. And to inspire you to help bring back and, and, and protect uh, our environment and Mother Earth. Plant some trees. We have removed millions not thousands, millions and millions of oak trees. So uh, uh, I encourage you to, to, to learn stories, tell stories, protect the earth, plant some trees, uh, buy my book. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I hope you in, enjoyed uh, the book and the stories. Uh, and. Uh, that you uh, find some, some more books and, and, and stories to read uh, and learn and to share. And if you have, ever have the opportunity to hear a storyteller tell stories, native storytellers, if you ever have, have, have the opportunity to hear a native storyteller tell stories about bear or coyote or eagle or raven, uh, uh, that, that's, that's a wonderful opportunity. Listen very intently, learn those stories, and then take those stories and tell them to your kids. And hopefully they'll tell them to their kids and their kids and their kids. 
and storytelling will live, live on and on. It's a very important part of all cultures for all tribal people. So thank you.